Wouldn't it be great to have a meal that's prepped and ready to go as soon as you're ready to eat? Well, that's what Let's Prep is all about. A little bit of time in the kitchen is gonna save you a lot of time later on. So, I'm your host, Donald Skeen. Let's Prep. Today we are gonna to make four delicious dinners that are perfect for prepping. You can have them ready to rock in your fridge as soon as you need a midweek dinner fix. So I've got the majority of my ingredients laid out. I think it's time to get prepping. Now pepperoni pizza pasta is a big hit in our house. Very simple to make. We're gonna start off with our pan nice and hot. And to this, we're gonna fry off our Kroger sliced pepperoni. These are pre-sliced pepperoni pizzas, so you can get them straight to the pan without any fuss on the chopping board. So to the pan, a little drop of Simple Truth olive oil. As soon as that comes up to temperature, we're gonna get in there with our pepperoni pizza slices. And you're gonna cook these literally for a minute or two. So as soon as they start to kind of crisp up, I'm just gonna transfer them to a plate. And you can see those lovely rich red oils. There's what's gonna flavor up the base of this gorgeous pasta dish. Now, with the pan still nice and hot, we're gonna get in there with our onions and our meat. So I've just finely chopped up some onion, straight into the pan, give that a good seasoning of some salt and black pepper. I always like to season the onions as soon as they go into the pan. Not only because you're building the flavor, but you're also gonna draw out some of the moisture of the onions and get really lovely flavor from them. So let that soften out. We're gonna bring the temperature up and we're gonna get in there with some garlic. I'm only adding the garlic in at this point because I don't want it to burn. You just want to infuse this with all that rich garlicky flavor. Now, to ump up that American Italian flavor, we've got a little bit of oregano going in here. Once that goes in, we're gonna get straight in there with our ground pork. So as soon as it goes in, just break it up with that wooden spoon. Don't be obsessed with getting it into tiny, small pieces. You want meaty chunks in throughout this pasta sauce. Okay, this is now in good shape. We've got crispy bits of meat. They're in nice kind of chunky bits. So I'm just gonna drain off a little bit of that fat into a bowl. I don't want it to be greasy as you dive into this pasta. So just take out about two tablespoons of the fat will do. Now the cheats aspect of this dish is that we're using a store-bought sauce. Don't be ashamed of this. This is a great little cheat in the kitchen and it's gonna get you dinner to the table in a lot less time. So this is the Simple Truth Organic Tomato and Basil Sauce and I'm gonna pour it straight in. And the beauty of this means that you don't have to spend another 15 minutes reducing down that tomato sauce. It's there and it's good to go. So stir that through. And then to this beautiful meaty sauce, we're gonna add our Kroger pasta penne straight into the pot. Give it a good stir. Looks a bit wild, but stick with me. Once you have that dried pasta in there and you've got it nicely coated in the sauce, I'm gonna grab about four cups of water and you're gonna add that straight to the pan and essentially cook the pasta out risotto style. So it takes a little moment just to bring that up to temperature and then you could pour yourself a glass of wine, you could take a little moment in the kitchen, but you're basically gonna cook that pasta out until it's al dente and it's soaked up all that water. We're gonna transfer this out into a baking dish, grab up some mozzarella, and rather than slicing this into big chunks, we're just gonna tear it with our hands and we're just gonna get nice little torn bits of mozzarella across the top here. I'm just gonna get in there with all those gorgeous pepperoni pizza slices and you kinda wanna nuzzle these under the cheese so as it melts, it kind of coagulates with all that gorgeous cheese. So we're gonna stick it under the broiler and cook it until that mozzarella turns beautiful and bubbling. Let's get it in the oven. Right, pasta bake has had a minute or two under the broiler and we should be left with, yes we do, gorgeous crispy pepperoni and melted cheese. Take a look at that, which I can't help but to try. I mean, this is what it's about and let's give it a taste test. Oh. I really think when you're serving something like this, it works really well if you have a nice crisp green salad on the side with a sharp dressing. It just rounds out your meal. Now it's time to prep a family favorite of mine, Angie's Irish Stew. This is a classic Irish dish that I grew up with. Angie looked after me when I was a kid growing up and she made one of the best Irish stews I ever came across. And it all comes down to browning off your lamb. So I'm using some Simple Truth lamb, which I've just seasoned up and I've browned it till it goes nice and golden. And now all you gotta do is transfer this out onto a plate. The beauty of browning it off like this is that you are building the flavor in the dish. And you'll notice in the bottom of the pan, I've got loads of little brown bits. That's where the flavor comes from. When you start adding the stock, all that gorgeous browning action will make all the difference to your flavor. Okay, we've got meat beautifully browned off. We've got a pan that has all those brown bits in the bottom of it. So let's get in there with some onions, some celery, and some carrots to build the flavor here. Now when it comes to stew, especially an Irish stew, I like a rough and ready stew. I don't want finely chopped action here. 
So I'm just giving nice chunky slices to my carrots. I want them to hold their shape as they stew down. Carrots, celery, onions, we are good to go in the pot. So drop in a little bit of oil and for good measure and for a bit of Irish comfort, a tiny touch of butter. So to the pot, in with the celery, carrots go in and don't forget about those onions. You kind of think with stews, sometimes it's, it's complicated, but this is really it. This is the bones of this great recipe. And once you have softened these down, meat goes back in, a little bit of stock and our potatoes. And don't forget to season. Always really important as you add your kind of base veggies in, season as you go. A little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. Right, veggies are softened down. So at this point, you're gonna go straight back in there with our browned off lamb. And any of the juices that have come out as they've been resting, make sure they go in too. To bring that depth of flavor, I've got a bay leaf or two going straight in. Right, to this mix, we're going straight in there with some Simple Truth organic beef stock, which is gonna give a really great depth of flavor to this dish. It's about four cups here. Give it a stir and we're gonna bring this up to boil. Now, as this comes up to temperature, it is important. In fact, it is imperative not to forget the potatoes because what would an Irish stew be without the potatoes? So I've peeled these and sliced them into chunks. This is a good little tip. We're just gonna take time, as this comes up to temperature, to place these in and around. Now, Irish purists will not be happy with this, but stick with me, it works. Once you've layered all those potatoes in and it's starting to look pretty like this, a few little slabs of butter just placed over the top is gonna finish these potatoes beautifully. Just before it's finished cooking, we're gonna take the lid off and turn up the heat and allow those potatoes to brown off. You should be left with tender lamb and beautifully browned potatoes. Don't forget to season with a bit of salt and pepper. Okay, this is now ready to go. So I'm gonna pop it in the oven. It's gonna cook out for an hour and 30 minutes. And the beauty of that kind of slow cook means that you have more time to meal prep as it cooks away. So we'll check it in about an hour and 30. I feel pretty good right now. The stew is cooking away. We've got some meals ready to rock. So now it's time for these one pan Asian meatballs, which are very simple to make and are jam packed full of flavor. I've got some ground pork. To this, we're gonna add in a little bit of garlic, some ginger, some spring onions. We're gonna add a touch of five spice powder, this wonderful heady spice mix of cloves and cinnamon and star anise, and it is a powerhouse of flavor. To this, some white pepper. A good teaspoon or so of that is gonna go in there. We're gonna add a little bit of the Kroger light soy sauce. Is some of the Kroger brand pure sesame oil. That little hint of sesame oil is gonna go a long way to adding some great nutty flavor. And even as I'm mixing this, the smell is wonderful. All that five spice action and that dark depth of saltiness you're gonna get from that soy sauce. About the size of a golf ball is what you're looking for. Okay, we have meatballs formed and ready to rock. Pan is on nice high heat. To this, we're gonna add some of the Simple Truth olive oil. So all we're looking for here is a really nice even brown across each of these meatballs. A little trick here is that we're gonna be adding a sauce in here which is gonna help create a bit of steam which is gonna ensure that your meatballs are cooked all the way through. Now I'm using ground pork here but you could use ground beef, you could use ground turkey, ground chicken, there's so many options. You could even use a completely meatless ground as well so the options are endless. For our sauce, we're essentially reusing the flavors that are in the meatballs. To a bowl, we're gonna add in a little bit of soy sauce. This is the Kroger light soy sauce. We're gonna add some Kroger rice vinegar. We've got a generous dollop of sriracha chili sauce. And to bring the sweetness and find the balance in this sauce, we've got a generous amount of brown sugar going in here too. Season up with some white pepper, a little more garlic, and some ginger. I want some sesame oil in there as well. At this point now, this sauce is good to go. So we've whisked it up, get the heat back on your meatballs, and you wanna get this up to a really nice high temperature. We're gonna dump in that sauce. It's gonna to continue to cook out our meatballs, and you wanna reduce it down until you get this gorgeous, sticky, unctuous coating all over these meatballs. We have lots of great things going in here, but I do wanna add a crunch factor. So we've got some sugar snap peas, we've got some bok choy, which I've chopped up, and then the last thing to prep is some spring onions. Straight into our meatballs. A little bit of green crunch. Do your best to kind of stir this through and just get them involved in that sauce. We're gonna allow these veggies to steam down and the liquid in here is gonna help cook through the meatballs, reduce down those veggies and you will have a one pan meatball dish to be proud of. I'm gonna finish it off with some fresh cilantro over the top. A generous sprinkle of some toasted sesame seeds will go a long way here. 
And that is it. It's time to crack on with our very last dish. This next salad is super simple to make and it involves that wonderful spice you get from sriracha with a sweet and sticky sauce and lots and lots of crunchy vegetables. We've got brown chicken, which I've just been browning off in a wok. To this, we're gonna make a sticky sweet sauce. So we need a heck load of sriracha sauce. A little bit of spice goes a long way here. Pour that in alongside some lime juice. And to this, we wanna make sure we get all those aromatics in there as well. So I've got the lime zest going in. A little bit of finely chopped ginger. You've got the sourness of the lime juice. You've got the spiciness of the sriracha sauce. And to balance it out, I wanna get in there with some Simple Truth organic raw honey. You wanna go big, especially for these sorts of flavorful sauces. To this, a little bit of saltiness coming in the form of some light soy sauce. And then just a hint of sesame oil is gonna go a long way in this dish. So about a teaspoon's amount going in here. Give that all a good stir. You wanna simmer this down for about five minutes just until that sauce starts to take on a life of its own and wraps itself around the chicken. It should be thick and it should be sticky. To the bowl, we're gonna add some red cabbage. Then we've got some julienne carrot. And then I've got some Simple Truth baby kale and I just want a few handfuls here. And I'm only gonna add about like half of a red pepper going in. As thin as you can with a nice sharp knife. I think when people talk about having a balanced diet, it's all about eating the rainbow, all of those great colors coming together. And I think this bowl is a great example of just that. I'm gonna give it a tiny drizzle of some sesame oil. And at this point now, I just wanna get in there with some herb action. So I've got some cilantro, and I'm just gonna pick this in, just nice torn handfuls of leaves, and then just get your hands in there and give it all a good toss. And then we're gonna add that chicken right on top while it's steaming hot. And it is the kind of salad that you wanna eat straight away because it will tend to wilt down that baby kale. But if you wanted to meal prep this, the chicken can be made separate and the salad can be made separate. And then when it comes to serving dinner, you just combine the whole thing hot. We have lots of great things going in here, but I do wanna add a crunch factor from some cashews. And last but not least, some edamame beans. These are a nutrient powerhouse, which are really great to add into a salad like this. We have our chicken looking good at this point. So you can see now it's completely coated. That sauce has reduced right down and you're left with these tender chicken pieces in this gorgeous, sticky, spicy sauce. So all I wanna do to finish this off is add our salad nicely tossed to the salad bowl. You want a good, even distribution of all those great ingredients. So you're getting crunch, you're getting greens, you're getting all that good stuff going on. And then to finish it off, you wanna make sure that you get in that hot, sticky chicken over the top. Now, to finish it off, a little sprinkle of toasted sesame seeds are gonna go a long way. And I can't resist, but have a few more little leaves of cilantro. They're just gonna add a really nice fresh pop here. There you go, a salad to be proud of and some really great meal prep ideas and inspirations. These are recipes that will save you time in the kitchen. Meal prep is all about that. So I hope you develop the meal prep mindset and save a little bit of time in your kitchen. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Let's Prep. Leave a comment letting us know what you'd like to see in future episodes and if you have any meal prep tips of your own. And remember that a little bit of time spent in the kitchen is gonna save you a lot of time in the long run.